Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com for your glider supplies. In this video we want to take a look at unboxing an LX9000. The package will come with two boxes. One has the main digital unit of the LX9000 in it and the second box will have your V8 Vario. We'll start with the first box with the LX9000. When we open the box, one of the first things that we're going to see is we're going to see this calibration curve. And so this calibration curve will give us the serial number for the unit as well as the date of calibration. And this is valid for five years from the date on the calibration curve. So that's something that you want to keep. Uh, personally, I scan it into my computer so I always have an electronic copy just in case the paper copy gets lost. Next thing we'll see when we open the box is we have our main LX9000 unit as well as a few miscellaneous items. So we'll start with the wires. First thing we have, GPS antenna. Then we have our wiring harness for the main unit. And finally, we have our LXNAV USB stick that contains all the manuals for all the LXNAV products. It's also a convenient keychain. And then finally, we have the main LX9000 unit. So there's our 9000 unit. On the back of the unit, we have various ports that we can use. The first thing is this sticker here that is a warning says please read the manual before you make any connections. If we connect the wrong wires to uh, the different peripherals we could cause some problems for this. So we have a flarm port that allows for the connection of a flarm display. We have a Wi-Fi antenna connection here and our Wi-Fi antenna is also in the box. And in the newer units the Wi-Fi antenna is just this little stick antenna that will clip into that Wi-Fi antenna port. And one more item that we'll find in the box is our little Allen key for the screws in the front of the LX9000 unit. So we have our Wi-Fi antenna, we have a USB port, we have the GPS antenna port. If you happen to get built-in FLARM and ADSB you can have antennas for FLARM and ADSB. You'll have SMA type connectors there to connect your FLARM. FLARM 2 would be for the diversity for a second FLARM antenna. And then hiding underneath the label here, there's one more port and that says PDA. And what that does is it allows us to connect an external uh, PDA device like an UDI and we'll send all the GPS information as well as any FLARM information from the main LX9000 unit into that peripheral display. Then our wiring harness. We have to be careful with the wiring harnesses because both the wiring harness for the main display and for the Vario, the V8 Vario, have a DB15 connector. And so that's why we have this label on here because we need to make sure we don't reverse these. The easy way to differentiate between the two wiring harnesses is that on the main unit we have this five pin binder plug and that's an RS-232 port and all of these are labeled that's an RS-232 and so that's where we connect an external FLARM device. So that's the one wire and the other wire terminates with just a black and a white and that is labeled power. So the most important thing to remember is that the power wire is the one that always connects to the main unit. It does not connect to the Vario. The Vario draws its power through this third wire, which is the 485, and it is a DB9 connector. And so the power is passed from the main digital unit into the Vario through that 485 wire. Next we'll open up the V8 box. Inside the V8 box we have another wiring harness and that wiring harness will go through as well. We have our V8 Vario display that is uh, nicely bubbled wrapped for us here. 
take off the protective styrofoam and we can see the display. And on the back we have one connector and that connector is for our uh, DB15 that's going to connect to the main unit. And then we have our three pneumatic connections and if we can see those the top one says PS, PST for P static, we have PTOT for P total or PTO pressure and then we have a TE port to connect to the TE probe. The wiring harness for this one, as I said, it also has a DB15 and that's where we have to be careful that we don't mix them up because both have this same DB15 plug. But the big difference is there's no power connection on this one and the easiest way to tell them apart is we have these wires for the uh, four digital inputs. The other distinguishing feature is this wire that has the OAT, so that's our outside air temperature probe. So that's how we can differentiate them. We also have another wire that will have a shrink wrap on it, and that is our SC or our speed command wire that we could connect to a stick switch if we're not using a remote stick. We also have a vario priority wire and that's heat shrinked as well and the vario priority wire allows us to connect to another external switch and whenever that switch is closed to ground the vario will always default to vario mode regardless of any other setting. For example if you had a flap switch that was forcing your Vario to be in cruise mode and you flip the Vario priority switch you will go back into Vario mode. So it's pretty easy to distinguish the wires between the power wire on the main unit and our four five digital input wires for the Vario unit. One more thing that we have in the box is we have our speaker. So the speaker will come packaged up in this little uh, Eagle Communications speaker box and it has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and that plug goes into the back of the Vario and you can see in that audio port just beside the uh, DB15 port.